Hey! 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 What up, everybody? Welcome in to a victorious edition of Whiskey and Wine from Don Juan Cigar Bar. We're back. We're back. Yo, what's up, y'all? And We're I'm back. Here. Welcome back. We're back. We're back in my fucking happy place. <laughs> Uh, I fucking love Don Juan. LSU beats Nichols 44 to 21. Your final. How about that, Colonels? We're here at the Don Juan Cigar Bar, presented by Gotlit Light Installers and Home Field Apparel. Shout out Our sponsors Homefield. are linked in the description on YouTube, and they will be tagged on Facebook as well. Look at us getting fancy, and look at the the whole um, we got the border and everything now as well. Yeah. Think about think. Look at us. You've built out quite look the production us. team program. Look at us. You've done a good job. Look at us. Look at us. You've done a good job. I texted Alondra and Taylor this morning, and admittedly, um, I was feeling good. I'm watching game day. I'm drinking coffee. But yeah. Alondra and Taylor are the best producers that I've ever worked with in my radio career. They're fantastic, and it's the entire team at Guarantee. It's everybody top to bottom. It's fucking fantastic. And uh, – yeah, man. Good night. You know, I mean, look, we're going to get into it. Fucking great day of college football. I mean, a banger of a week, too. Yeah. A weird day in college football, which we'll get into. And um, obviously, a lot of the conversation is going to center around, do we feel more bullish or more bearish on our LSU Tigers here after week two, and I'm uh, very uh, excited to have that conversation. I don't know that I feel any more or less anything. I hate these games so much. What do you actually make of this? The only the only hope is that you don't. You the only hope is that you don't get Notre Dame today. You know what I mean? Like you don't yeah. you don't sleepwalk after a big game and end up. Oh just my girl! The bed. Shout out Laurel! Shout out Laurel! Don Juan Legend, Thank you, my Laurel. favorite girl. She's the fucking best. You are. All right. Um, do you want to talk for a second while, uh, while I tag everything? And we'll... Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and tweet it out. Go ahead and tweet it out. Um, okay, guys. So, obviously, <clears throat> a first half that was uh, about as disconcerting as you were going to find. I did not have on my bingo card oh, the heir to the God, Guggenheim. fucking expression. You know what? Okay. Uh, I didn't have it in your bingo card. Fuck, I hate that expression. What do you mean? I didn't have that in my bingo card. Everybody says, I the bingo card. If you had on your bingo card, Colin Guggenheim. I didn't have that in my bingo card. about their fucking bingo card? I'm expression. fucking done. I'm I hate that done. fucking okay, expression. Good, then you talk, dude. I, don't give a I shit. hate that expression so yeah, much. Yeah, bingo card. Oh, I have to share this on the text line, too. Sorry, go ahead. What did you have on your bingo card? What was on your uh, your bingo card? What was <laughs> you got to be fucking hot if you think I'm going to engage with you after this immediately antagonistic opening with which you've opened this show. Already, I want to mm, rip that mm, headset mm, off. Mm. <laughs> and slap my balls on your mouth. Uh, I did lick your cigar already. I but, made him lick my cigar. Hey, can we do the toast real quick? Yeah, let's, All right, do, the let's toast. do the toast real quick, everybody. Yeah, because we fucking won, dude. Uh, LSU wins a victorious toast. You know the drill. Yeah, Raise your glass, whatever right you've got in it. Take a picture of your, if you're new, take a picture of your toast, toast into your TV, take a picture with us, tweet it, tag me, tag T-Bob, tag ESPN, uh, Instagram us, whatever we're going to share. Tigers win, Tigers win. Cheers. 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 Tigers win. Cheers. All right, go Tigers. Go Tigers. And um Guggenheim was a beast, so dude. Um we gotta get into we'll get into the game itself. I thought huge win tonight. Sure. I agree, Preston Salazi. Huge win. Way to fight. I thought for sure Sur- Alabama scored again. <laughs> oh my god. Final score not reflective. Oh my god. I mean, South Florida had the ball. At the five yard line with a chance to to get a touchdown and a two point conversion to tie. I mean, I know they, on they, a day, they the shot I know on a day where, run, North, run, where Northern Illinois <laughs> wins that like uh, maybe you could argue the field goal is the correct choice, but I feel like you got to no, say fuck you, it, bro. You're <laughs> I say you go for the touchdown, yeah, and then, you, and you then I say you onside kick it. Yeah, but I mean, but, but, but that's illogical, right? Because up to that point in the game, you had stopped them. But 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 whatever, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it, it was a 
Uh, wait, by the way, real quick, do I need log super chats or are you going to actually do the super I'll, chats? I'll have them week? again if you want okay. that. So okay. the objective yes. was like we did last week. So I can put your comments on this on the screen. So like um, like here's one from uh, blown coverage. I'm starting to think seven and five is coming to play. By the way, I'm not uh, pussy. My name is the podcast that I've been trying the to find yeah. the time show. Okay, I love a good super chat fucking advertising play. Let's go. Everybody go check out the Blown Coverage no, podcast. No, don't go check that out. Hell and, yeah, uh, dude. And it, Fuck and yeah, it, dude. It actually, Smart. Heady play Blown Coverage. Fucking actually, you know what? Now and I'll never put somebody's podcast on here again. Why, Fuck dude? Them. We all had to start somewhere. Don't yeah, be a did. hoe, dude. Uh, but I would agree with this. The 7 and 5 thing is interesting because we were playing a fun game in the bar tonight where we were adjusting LSU's record on a play-by-play basis. I think Blown Coverage might actually be Marler. At one point, <laughs> at one point, we got down to 6.3 to 4.7, but then we eventually <laughs> raised back up to 7.2 to 4.8. Uh, I'm maybe ending back at 7.2 to 3.8. There you go. Uh, is that right? My math is all off. <clears throat> I don't know. I've been drinking mezcal all night, dude. Yeah, you have. Um, all right, y'all. Glad to have you aboard with us here. we got a lot to do uh, over the next 90 minutes or so. Uh, get your comments in. We'll follow them. We'll make sure that we uh, we put the super chats and other comments. Look, even if you don't uh, have oh a super God. chat, Fuck Las look Vegas at this guy and shout out to uh, LSU Cigar can't Bar. run the ball. If LSU can't run the ball, we're going to be in trouble. So there, I put someone's uh, comment up that's not a super chatter. Um, you want to go ahead and give your your takeaways for the game, or do you want me to start? I'm no, 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 no. I, I, my, my take, yeah, no. I, I'm I'm gonna okay. My takeaways are very succinct. Um. It doesn't matter what happened in the first half for the LSU fans' psyche. The damage was all done. Or excuse me, it doesn't matter what happened in the second half. For the LSU fans' psyche, the damage was done in the first half and at the beginning of the third quarter when Guggenheim rips off the 57-yard touchdown or whatever it was. 67. And so this is a week in which we already said coming in, we all knew that there was nothing that was going to happen that was going to make you feel better. The only potential was to make you feel worse. Yep. And it's an odd week because I came away from last week's film, which I watched for about four hours, feeling like the LSU defense is very limited personnel-wise, but that the coaches had done a really good job of managing that personnel and putting them in a position to win. And so then you enter this week, and all of those limitations felt like they were really highlighted and um <clears throat> and it's it's and and again i mean all the chatter at the bar and it's very hard to escape is why do we pay this motherfucker two and a half million dollars and um it's like spider-man it's like uncle ben told spider-man with great power comes great expectation with great money comes great expectation and so even if you were like me and you were trying to be a bit bullish about the lsu defense after week one uh you've probably lost a lot of footing to stand on here after week two. I just so I, I promise that I'm I'm not pandering. I, I just don't I don't feel like I moved one way or another on this team. I think like, how many times I think logically that's correct. Okay. But but I'm just saying like but the temperament of the fan base is not going to I get it engage in that nuance. It's it's all listen realistically the only well I was gonna say the only chance that you actually have to um, to get good vibes pumped back into this fan base would be a, a good win, which would be Ole Miss. But then again, look at—I mean, South Carolina went to Kentucky today and put it on Kentucky. It's so almost as you go on the road Kentucky, next week and a, and win. Yeah. It's that's a nice conference win. It's almost as if Kentucky has been fucking Mark Stoops has been gaslighting the entire state for eight million dollars a year. I've been trying to fucking tell you, motherfuckers, dude. They just don't have any expectation. They don't care. <sighs> see, this is that. See, nope. This is how you keep them down, dude. But they this don't care. Keep, this is how you keep them but down. But they dude. don't care. I'm not going to care for Kentucky. I will. I don't care. I fucking will. That's what I'm trying to say. Every league needs its store match, bro. Kentucky, I need Kentucky to every suck. Every time a Kentucky fan wants to be upset, everybody else tells him, but you're Kentucky. You shouldn't be upset. Yeah, yeah Kentucky's paying their coach fucking $8 million a year. They ran the ball 17 times in a row and came away with two field goals. And then lost 31-6. to six. If I was a Kentucky fan, I'd be fucking pissed. But you're not. And if you were a Kentucky fan, you wouldn't care because Kentucky fans don't care. You're I looking did. at it through the – we're already spending way too much time talking about Kentucky. Kentucky. Here. Can we get the Oregon game on, by the way? Yeah, ask her the Cox remote. Laundra, if you ask her the Cox remote, I can put it on. 
Um, all right, so a couple of takeaways. Coming into this game for LSU, I like I just my number one thing was stay healthy. I mean, how many times did you play in these games? These shit games that nobody really cared about. Tell me the emotion wasn't what like exactly we no, saw. No, it was great. It always felt like a pseudo buy, right? Because so many of these games are so anxiety ridden and so high pressure that you feel like your entire life is on the line going into the games and then so you win one uh, you win one of the big ones and you enter one of these and you're like okay i can fucking relax a little bit right like we're gonna win it is what it is um so so yeah this is this this is not a game where the players are uh nearly as locked in as they would have been last week or or in most weeks um so i i, I just my number one thing is come away from this healthy like, it's always my number one thing in these games. It's like, get, just get through the game, get your, get your lead, get your starters the fuck out of there and, and get out of it healthy. And unfortunately, yeah. that didn't happen for LSU. Jacoby no. and Guillory left with injury. He, they put him in a boot. They were taking him for x rays. That's the scary. I mean, that we're sucks. fucking cooked. If Guillory's out, we're fucking cooked. Anyway. He's your best guy. I mean, he's your best interior defensive lineman. And you may have lost him here against fucking Nichols. It's on, it's on Peacock. Oregon's on Peacock. Oh, we don't have Peacock, and this yeah. is Cox. We're um, <clears throat> so I don't know if there's another game on if you want to put on. But all right. And then Kyron Lacy comes up, you know, gets injured on the touchdown reception where he hurdles the guy. He was limping the play before. Um, uh, all I was saying on that is like, as long as it's not a broken tailbone, yeah. we're fine. And it looked like it was maybe just a a bruised tailbone of some sort. I mean, whatever. He came back in and scored fucking. Touchdowns. Came back in. He was awesome, but. Garrett Dellinger didn't play because of injury. Uh, Nussmeyer, it was scary when he was his leg locked Jesus, up on him. That was dude. that's. I mean, you that's want to talk about really we, fucking your season? That's, that's, that's we, over. That's when it's we over. dropped to six and six. <clears throat> yeah, that if, was the lowest point of Don Juan. We dropped to six and six at that point. Thankfully, Nuss came back. It was just a cramp. He was fine. So, um, oh bro, we got Mississippi State ASU. Oh, let's go. Yeah, that'd be well, awesome. It's on after this. Okay, a little late night. Yeah, man. Um, so like the injury thing sucks i mean that's like you you hope jacoby and guillory's okay the fact that they put him in a boot and it sucks for nichols every time i saw a nichols player down i'm just yeah. reminded about how fucking pointless these games are yes they are and i understand the economics and i feel bad because a lot of these smaller schools support all their sports through the paydays that are made by these guys who have to put up their fucking bodies on the line and these inherently disadvantaged situations. And and it's it, imagine this. It's like life. There's a lot of gray area. I don't want that money to be taken away, but I also don't want the fucking 150-pound guy to be put against a 215 heavyweight and, and have to, like, fucking fight. Like, yeah. it's, 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 it's just a really kind of – because, like, as the financial gap continues to grow – the the unfair nature of these so like I saw multiple nickels O linemen go down with injuries and that fucking bummed me the fuck out. Yeah. I don't want that shit. I want everybody to emerge. Oh, Dick, come on. Richard Dixon, come on. Give him a chair. Hey. Give him a chair. Let's get him a chair. Get him a mic. Let's get him a chair. Get him a mic. Oh, oh no. Wow, the glasses didn't break, dude. We're good. We're good to go. We're fine. Good, um, safe, good safe, Chuck. Dick, we probably got to just get you a chair. Not, it's not going to be one of these because we can't fit in the screen. But she can get, we can get like one of the the low chairs. Okay, Alondra's no, no, no. She I'm going to show respect to my elders, Dick. You come sit right here. Come on, you come sit right here. No, she's gonna, getting, she's getting a chair. I'm do a cross-legged, dude. She's getting a. We're fine, dude. Let's go. <laughs> this is so stupid, Richard Dixon. This is so stupid. My fucking guy. I'll never forget. I'll his, never his, forget. Turn his, his mic, mic is not. Wait, you're uh, you're by the soundboard. Turn up. Can you talk, talk? Talk. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, there what's it up? is. <laughs> I'll never forget. Richard Dixon had the biggest traps I've ever seen back freshman year. He Atta made babe. me want to hit the gym, dude. There you go. Untraps feeling today, man. All right, Dick. What's oh, your they, they, they feel really good from them crutches the last three months. I promise you that. <laughs> Hell yeah, we love to see you healthy and back. Yeah, good to see you. Look at that big one right Jesus. down the side. Oh my god, dude. This one on Look this that. side. Big old star. Like the the up there. The football, then you end up so for those that don't know, dude, Richard Dixon, former brother. LSU tight end, national champion, number eighteen, was in a bad car wreck recently man we're glad you're you're good we're glad you're t -Bop, get you're up and rolling chair over here. Oh, i swear to no, god sit in the fucking chair, chair. Oh, okay, we're we're here. we're getting all this framed up we're good we're good we're good we're good we're good all right dick we were just going through uh some takeaways my first thing was just you just want to get out of a game like this healthy and unfortunately it looks like they weren't that was the uh, worst part i mean the whole game i'm thinking like to me this is a get back game go out there and you know 
get right on things you messed up last week. This is a team that, you know, T-Bob knows. I hate to say a glorified scrimmage, but, like, you're, you're better than that You're team. chilling. Everybody, you're not nearly as stressed. But, like, for me, like, I was stressed to the point where I didn't want to be embarrassed. Like, I had yeah. to beat them so bad because, to me, like, I'm going against a guy every time that I was recruited here. He wasn't. Yeah. He, he's, he wants to play at LSU. He can't. So I'm going to dominate that guy every night, the whole game. So when I watch this game, like, yeah, you, you talk about relaxed, but I'm stressed out about embarrassing myself because like, I wanted to go out there and dominate every single play, get out by the second half, put a dip in on the sideline, and chill out. <laughs> God, dip on the sideline was such a good I had a, I had a trainer. Day, I had a trainer carry a can of dip for me, yeah. and I told him before every game, I said, I'm going to be out by the second half, and I want my dip in. That's so good. So, I mean, look, Dick, Dick is not – hmm. I don't. I don't disagree about like because we I used were to different. Inter- I, I, I used to enter these mean? games. I used T-Bow to. Enter- way more relaxed than I am. Like see, I, I got. Uh, I was scared. Oh, I see, I see every game. You know, like I was scared of embarrassment. Hey, you, you two were different. I got yeah. you. I don't know, but I mean, I, again, it's it, it's a weird thing where it's like. I used to hype myself up before the games. Like I can't believe they even think they should be on the same fucking field with us. Wrong. They get all mad, but like, you cannot deny that the Friday night anxiety that you felt before playing Alabama was multiple orders of magnitude. Like, you were kind of chilling the night before these games. I took an Ambien before every game. Yeah, exactly. So you it were, didn't really you were matter. chilling the <laughs> night like, I, was, I, I was going to sleep. But, like, no, I'm telling you, like, you can talk to Saran, talk to anybody. In 07, when we played Kentucky, I was a sophomore. I wasn't, like, considered a leader on the team yet. But everybody felt like we should beat Kentucky. It's Kentucky. They're garbage. And then when we're in the locker room, everybody's joking around. And I'm – MFing people, I forget we can cuss on this show. Yeah, yeah. But like I'm motherfucking people the whole time because I'm like, hey man, this this we got to take it serious. And then the second half when we're when Brett Helms goes down, yeah, and then early he sets out, yeah, we're we're all struggling. And I'm like, hey sudden, motherfuckers, this is real. real. This is real. We're in all a fucking of a sudden, game. You're in a fist fight and you can't fucking get out of it. Josh dude. Henson called me to the meeting like because he saw how pissed off I was before the game about how people were taking it. And then you know I get called in the office Monday morning like, hey, you're not a sophomore anymore. Be a leader and tell them to straighten the fuck up. It's fair. I mean, it's fair points all around. I mean, but okay. So, so I mean, okay. So, what's your takeaways from tonight? Are you more? How do you feel about LSU based on like what did you feel coming out of week one, and now you see this? Do you feel po- more positive or more negative? After I feel worse. I feel absolutely worse. I mean, look, I, I get it that everybody expects a mindset, a letdown, whatever. But to me, when you lose that game with all the hype, when look. I, I still love Will Campbell, but when he comes out talking about we're gonna, you know, we're going to a fist fight, we're gonna run the ball, Every, we're gonna tell people we're running the ball, and you can't run against fucking Nichols. They got out tough. I mean, that, that's the most disappointing part about tonight. I, I LSU, by the, the way, score. just LSU had, had 64, <clears throat> 64 rush yards tonight on three three yards per attempt. Your longest carry came from fucking Garrett. Three. It was uh, a scramble. And, unless I missed the last five minutes. Honestly, it was, it no. Was, and you, honestly, you got but, away from can, the run. You can't run the ball. Right, so let, uh, that's I was going to ask. So and again, I'm, I'm. This is this is devil's advocate just asking the question. So last week, didn't everyone say they were too conservative? Your offensive weapons or your receivers sling it. Well, they threw it thirty. They were twenty-eight of thirty-eight for three fourteen and six passing touchdowns. They ran it 21 times for 64 yards. So I, 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 and and I feel comfortable saying this. This is not a put on, because anybody that talked to me during this week in passing, right? Anybody I talked to out in public, I, I kept hearing play calling, play calling, play calling, and I kept telling them, I, watching the game live, watching the film for four hours, the play calling never jumped out to me. Maybe the third and one was the only time where I was like, okay, maybe a little more creativity there could be good. Even you, still, if, if you put Pimpton a tight end, block, I'm about yeah. to say, you put Thank a tight end yeah, on exactly. the backside. No, but Look, my point is like, what's your weak? What's, what do you put a weak blocker at? Backside cutoff. You put the weak blocker yes, on the backside yes, cutoff. Yes. And then he's not even weak. That was just bad. But my overall point is like, I never felt like Play Con jumped up stage. In fact, when we went on, on, our, on our Thursday or Friday show, I apologized. Because I felt like I had kind of misled everyone or misconstrued my own points where I was like, I don't want LSU to get away from the run. We talked about this Nichols game, and I said, look, the majority of y'all are not going to give a fuck what happens because it's Nichols, right? But if you really want to get granular, because that's what we do. I mean, we fucking live our lives to this singular team. We have to get granular. What are the things that I want to see on a granular level? My entire fucking thing was I want to see them stick with the run and continue to practice it and build on counter 
and learn to fucking run the ball because it feels like an O-line and a tight end group that has not trained running the ball. And so I wanted to use these reps to run it. I fucking know Kyron Lacey can beat these guys. I know these receivers can beat these guys. That's my ultimate disappointment from tonight is you fell back on your obvious strength and you didn't work on your weaknesses exactly. in a time when you should have. Well, that's that's my exact point. I mean, this is a game where you come in, you talked all that mess about we're going to run the ball, we got the best O-line in the country, and it failed against USC. So tonight, I wanted to go prove it. Let's, let's go out there and beat the shit out of these guys. The let's go bully them. them up. Let's show them why they can't play for LSU. Yeah. Let's push them in the fucking backfield. And they got standstill every run block. Bro, These guys is, can't run block. They're well, not good well, at it. It's funny, man. They are the opposite of our era of O-linemen where we couldn't really pass block because we spent our whole <laughs> life run blocking. They've spent I had their, that conversation they, earlier. They, they've spent their whole life pass blocking, and so they don't really know how to fire up okay, the ball. But if you're if great you at something, a, you got to do both. If I you want to say you're bro. the best O-line in the country, you got to do both. You can take the SAT and make a 36 on a fucking math. If you get a 10, a 10, and a 10 on the rest, you're not that fucking smart. Bro, don't fuck. I mean, I, look, don't tell me you can't run block at a two-point stance. I watched Texas-Michigan earlier. I've watched that every Texas, other team play. That Texas O-line was fucking a they elite, dominated a lot of an elite Michigan and, D-line. And by an the way, elite Michigan Texas, D-line. Texas doesn't even have their top two running backs. Like C.J. Baxter's out for the year with a torn ACL. I mean, it doesn't down. matter. They no, were pushing no, three. No, 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 Even with? Yeah. 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 Texas is dominant. They were pushing three fucking yards back every time. I tweeted earlier. I said, I hope the LSU line is watching this Texas line about how you can fucking run block out of a spread, out of a two-point stance. Like, you can do it. These LSU players just feel like they haven't had a, a ton of practice on it, honestly. But I don't so want to say a ton of them. practice. They came out before the game saying, we're going to run the ball. That's what we do. We're going to tell you we're going to run the ball, and then you can't do it. That's what's frustrating to me. Look, We're going to overblow this, whatever. They beat them by 20-something points. But my thing is, is I want to be dominant when we play these games. Like, I told everybody, we had our starters playing halfway through the fourth quarter. Yeah, I know. So Bro, I don't want to play the second half. So sad. We I don't have dips in. The I want to be texting my boys to ready when, up the beers. When when LSU went up three scores in the third quarter, Ivan tweeted, "Okay, now get everybody like get everybody the fuck out of there." And I don't know what there was. The TV broadcast showed at one point, like at the end of the first half, Brian Kelly had his hands on Nussmeier's shoulder pads. It was talked. I don't, I don't know what he was saying, but it almost felt like he was saying, "Get one more." Like I that, I, I was thinking, he's saying, "All right, get one more, and you're out of the game." Yeah. I wonder if, like, that wasn't – like, there's no fucking reason for Will Campbell and his ACLs to be out there when you're up four fucking touchdowns on nickels in the fourth quarter. I agree. There's I would, no it, fucking it's, reason it's, for it's, it. It's needless what, what, risk. It's, it's needless that's the point, risk. Like, you're trying to prove a point, but you're putting you're putting these guys at risk when you've already had injuries in the game. I don't know, man. But you like, played a one-score game through two-and-a-half quarters. What are you proving by putting them in on the fourth we quarter did to beat them by three we, touchdowns? We did do that a lot in our era, though, dude. We used to I mean, fuck around. Era. We, my era, bitch. What the fuck are you talking about? You look, were on that 08 team. You were fucking. Uh, that 08 team, look, about? apparently got kicked off the team before the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuses are like fucking buttholes. Get the fuck out of here. All I'm saying is we used to fuck around a lot with these small ass teams in Les Miles area. You know what I'm talking about. You're talking about 08 with the worst, def- the co coordinators, the worst coordinators LSU's ever freaking had. Oh, uh, you had Bo Pelini here, bro. Look, I look, Jerry Lee threw a lot of interceptions that year. Go back and we scored 38 points a game. Yeah. The offense is actually offense scored a ton. I, about to say. Bro, I mean, the fucking Georgia game was 52 to 38. We we're, rushed for over 300 yards. We're in that lo- game. Okay, okay. I remember we're, the game well. So, okay, so we're, 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 we're losing the thread a little bit here looking at the past. The bottom line is <clears throat> this team, this LSU team did not tonight, for me, did not do the things that I wanted to see them do. We talked about it this week. I said granularly. What do I see? I want to see him commit to the run and run the ball better. I want to see the linebackers play with heavy hands. I want to see the whole front seven play with heavy hands and pop people and push people backwards. And uh, they failed. And I said I wanted to see the coverage be better. And they failed spectacularly on all three counts. I agree. I, Guillory getting hurt is killing us. I mean, we're fucking that's we're screwed that's right brutal. now. That pushes us. I already had a ceiling at nine and three, realistic eight and four. Now I feel like that eight and four has just been reinforced. Like I feel like when I'm talking about positives right now, I'm looking to the future. I think Woodland's going to be really good. Yeah, PJ Woodland's doing good. I think, I think uh, Stamps will be good. Over Stamps time. is going to be okay, but you know we're talking about the young guys and the improvement. I think Weeks is our best defensive player right yeah. now. Um, 
You know, it, it's frustrating. Honestly, dude, honestly, Perkins' best position was what he played last year, that nickel linebacker. Just put him on the edge in rush situations right at this point because, look, look he's going to be a good football player, but he is not making an impact on the game. He had three when, tackles today, when, one solo. When you talk and, about and number way, seven. And by the way, he was in on the final defensive series, too. Yeah, Here, I mean, he, he you, played if, the entire if, He's a non-factor if, in the if game. you really want to see – how raw Harold it, Perkins bro. looks at inside linebacker. Watch Mason Cobb from USC last week and watch Perkins because Mason Cobb's the exact same size. And it's instinct. And there's like reading. there's like an early counter in last week where Emory Jones has the angle on Cobb and Cobb has no momentum, but Cobb sees him and he bomb he fucking pops him and he stonewalls him, and then you watch Perk. And it's a lot of catching, scraping over the top. It's just, it's just, it's. Perk is an athlete. He's a freak athlete. He's not strong. He's not a strong football player. He's not going to stop somebody in the tracks. But you can play with heavier hands and your size would dictate, but he hasn't done it his whole life and he doesn't have it. Like, like Kevin Minter used to play with those heavy ass fucking hands and head. Shout out to Kevin Minter. Back in the There's day. Kevin, the heaviest hands and head we ever played with didn't even step on the field with Jeremy Benton. He gave me a concussion at practice every freaking day. <laughs> but, like, I, I get what you're saying. Perk is a guy that, like, I want to almost want to put him in the star position, wherever they're playing Burns at. I was thinking that, too, dude. He put was him in that position. Let him, that's, he that's, was what, the, that's what it'll be in the NFL. He was yeah. one He'll of be the highest-graded coverage. He was the one of the highest-graded. He, he, had he had one of the highest PFF grades in coverage last year in the entire country. He had over an 80-grade in coverage. Yeah. yeah. He was like, this is, star. Like, this is a Harold Perkins decision. Like let's just call he it, wants what, to play let's linebacker, call it what yeah. it is. Harold Perkins wants to be a three down linebacker because he wants that to translate to the NFL. Because he's he's people say, well, Michael Par he's not Michael Parsons. No. Michael Parsons is 260 fucking pounds. Like Perkins is not going to be Michael Parsons. He's more what you all are describing in that star role, the sort of nickel Sam. That's going to be his best position that translates to the next level, unless if he gains 20 pounds and and learns how to thump on the so, inside. So he's I not that. I, again, I don't think it's entirely size related. I agree because, with you. Because it can be technique, but he just he's coming too late to the technique game, I think, to try to Blake learn Blake Baker it this said point. this offseason, and he was asked point blank about this. And I think it might, fuck, I think it might have been on y'all's show at one point, on OTB this offseason. And Blake Baker said point blank. The first thing is, and I'm paraphrasing, like, can you do it physically? Like, do you have the physical ability to play the position? And he said, Perkins has the ability to do it. <laughs> Now it's just about reps and getting comfortable doing and, and developing that instinct toward toward the position. And the only way you can do it is is reps. And so, like, you're kind of fucking building the bridge as you cross it here with Perkins if they're going to keep him in that position. But I'm listen. So I, maybe he I, gets I, better than maybe I, he gets better. What are you playing? I, 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 I want to be very clear. I he played agree, inside line. I, would, I, inside I line. agree with both of you. Like, it's very clear where you have this dynamic guy with a skill set to do something very well. And you're taking him out of that to try to make him into something that clearly he's not as good at right now. So, I'm, but I'm not the fucking coach. Blake Baker is, and Blake Baker's trying to make him an off ball line. Guy. It's frustrating when my best memories of Harold Perkins are his freshman year. I yeah. so so I do want to say this though about the freshman year. When did Harold Perkins have his best game? Ole Miss. When Arkansas? he was against Ole Miss, Arkansas. Obviously, well, actually, okay. So this is not entirely fair because honestly. Him spying Bryce Young was some of the best players yeah, I've no, ever seen. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But outside of that, it was against very flawed quarterbacks. We saw had their super backup in because KJ Jefferson yeah, was out. Yeah. Fucking uh, Auburn had um, uh, uh, he played for South Carolina today. My guy. Oh, Robbie Ashford. Ashford. Robbie Ashford. They had Robbie Ashford in there, and so like, I like you saw what had, like Miller Moss got rid of the ball. I don't think Perk would have had success off the edge against Miller Moss. So. None of these answers are. None of these answers are are, are 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 like just obvious. They're very situational. But I feel like in three years of perk, I agree. Star is probably the best position. But I guess you're already committed to this, so you keep trying. Like the same way I said, I want to see them stay committed to the run and let them get better. Maybe you just have to stay committed to perk and hope that he starts playing. It's easy for me runs. because Burns is a poor tackler. Put no, him in Burns there. Is struggling at why are you taking? Yeah. Uh, I get Wes and we yeah, forty out. Why are you taking, why are you taking forty out? Yeah. Wait, why don't take him out again. Why are you taking forty out? You don't take forty out. He's the best defensive player we have on the field. I agree. Um, real quick, uh, thank you so much for being with us. If you're on YouTube, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, Facebook, like the page, share the post, all that stuff. Uh, we're at Don Juan Cigar Bar. Appreciate them greatly. Big shout out as well, uh, y'all from you. 
the, the we're smoking the the Bocock 100 year of Tiger Stadium cigar. Uh, I think this is delicious. It's uh, it's, it's light and flavorful. It's fantastic. The um, the wrapper on it is the 100 year anniversary. This is an officially licensed LSU thing. They got them here at uh, at Don Juan, uh, and also shout out Got Lit Light Installers. Uh, T. Bob will tell you about Homefield here in a second. But we got the sponsors pinned uh, or uh, tagged in the uh, in the description on YouTube and pinned on Facebook or uh, tagged on Facebook. Uh, got Lit. So they're back for another year. Cannot um, wait. Do so, all your Christmas lights. You don't lift a finger, dude. My and neighbors then, got them. Shout out Home Field Apparel. Uh, this is one of the shirts in the box. I got a great 1970s SC, 1970 SEC championship sweatshirt. I'm waiting to break out when it gets a little cooler. We still nice. have the bombers. We still have the socks. We have the koozies, everything, right? Uh, the deal is, though, you use the code LSU24 at checkout, and you get 15% off. 15% off. Okay. To the crawl. T-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, hats, bombers. Buy the football box, and you get like an awesome starter pack of LSU gear that you can rock the entire fall. Use the code LSU24. You get 15% off, and it comes with a bunch of stuff if you buy that box. All right, I'm going to add that here to the uh, to the crawl. Hey, so what is it? Again? Happy birthday to our guy Kendall. Okay, my guy. He's a whiskey and wine regular. A wonderful hippie couple from Northern California. Well, they're from here, but they, you know, Northern California turned 59 today. Happy birthday, man. It was very fun getting to hang out with your birthday. I know you didn't want anybody to know it's your birthday. Happy birthday anyway. Code LSU24 for what? Uh, 15% off. For 15%. On, off any first order at Homefield. Homefieldapparel.com. Shit. Um, I'm trying to type. So okay, before wait, and then got lit. Let me just clarify. So got lit is it's easy. If you want Christmas lights, they come to your house. They give you a quote. They bring the lights. You don't have to buy the lights. They have them. They'll yep. decorate your home when the season's over. They'll manage it during the season. If you have any issues when the season's over, they come take it down, they take it away. It up, you do nothing. Like we my, had, we had a couple lights out last year. We called them. They fixed them, and then and then at the end of the day, they just fucking. I'm pretty them sure up. my neighbor and, has them, and they do permanent lights to where like tonight they got purple and gold lights on their house. So I actually like got lit a little bit better than the permanent no, I, lights. No, I thought they that set was them up. Lit, no, but they no no it's fine though because I don't I don't want necessarily permanent lights at all. They set them up. They take them down. You yes, don't do shit. That's oh, awesome. You're fucking good to go. I would also like to say there's probably people thinking let's wait until like Thanksgiving. That's too fucking late. We sold out was, very soon last I was, year. They, now, they're staffed up way more this year to do more, but I talked to Derek today. He said they already started doing quotes a month ago. Let's go, baby. So, like, don't wait until November because by then, like, they're in full install. Like, call them. If you're if you're interested, let them come give you a quote now. Got lit, home field, or tagged, um, or tagged on Facebook, and they're linked in the description on YouTube as well. So, you want a positive? Wanna, yes, I was going to go through the game, game but yeah, good, good. Well, good. let's go game flow. But no, before no, you do game flow, I'll say this. I have positives too. A lot of times, fans get mad when players celebrate in frustrating games, but like there were a couple great moments tonight. Trey Des Green getting his first touchdown at Tiger Stadium. Yep. Is that guy not supposed to be fucking pumped? Jawan Johnson How awesome. Dude, switching awesome. to offense in the middle of the week and then finding his way to a tud the first time. Love like, it. I don't care how mad you are about it. Good for fucking that kid. That is an excellent moment, man. Who was pissed about that? Well, no, because it's it's that thing where you hate a touchdown it, celebration when you're struggling against a bad team. Yes, that that's what I'm talking about. Like the fans, us on the outside, we're like, what the fuck are you celebrating for, dude? We're fucking like, we should be beating this team 42 to nothing. But like that kid's in the fight. They yeah. don't give a shit about expectation. They're trying to do the best they can, and they score a touchdown in front of fucking 95k. Of course, they're fucking pumped. Well, you don't want like what you're talking about. The fans, everybody knows you should be winning, but when it, when it is a battle, you're still fighting. Yeah, you're still so fighting. You still have the emotions there when you yes. score that touchdown to, to get a get a lead. You don't give a damn who it is. You're excited that you perform. And so, like, I don't love that we threw the ball 37 times to 38. 21 carries, but I fucking, you know, I, 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 I feel good for these players and Will Campbell and everybody else celebrating when they score because whatever. I mean, it's just it, – it, it's what you work for 365 days of the year is for this singular moment where you get to fucking put it on the field on Saturday. Uh, if you're up 40 and celebrate, I don't like it that much. Kyron Lacey had three Jeez. touchdown receptions tonight. He's proving he is every bit the superstar stud receiver that we all thought he could be. That's fair. Yeah. I mean – In I, the intermediate game, and I'm not putting this on Kyron – I think they really struggled with the deep ball tonight. 
Yeah, Garrett, so we're, that's we're, my, gonna, we're gonna get Chris Hill yeah. fucking out, dude. Well, yeah. But even with that, Garrett, that's why I wasn't in the same zip code throwing a D ball. That's true. He, he was so long on him. Look he, on the, he, long or sh- wide. On the first possession, you had second and nine. They went to Shelton Sampson down the right sideline, and he threw him out of bounds. I mean, yeah. Sam, Sampson caught the ball forty yards downfield, but he was but he threw him out of bounds. That, then that was frustrating to me because if you're gonna come out there and look, we're gonna throw, we're gonna bomb it on you. I want like, and Garrett's been good at that in the past. He be just able, had an off night. Jaden Daniels was really good. He was that's, really, that's, really good. That. That's the other thing, dude. Jaden Daniels learned to throw the deep. Joe ball Burrow wasn't bad at, at it either. The unparalleled level, like Jaden Daniels could not throw it two years ago, yeah, and then funny. last year he became. That's funny. That was I the knock when he showed it up. In the yeah. fucking, it was the accuracy. He dropped it in the bucket, and then I think about Jaden in the preseason, yeah. where his first third down, he checks out of his screen and he fucking drops it in like. Jaden Daniels made himself into an elite deep ball thrower, and it's a very hard thing to do. Those are low percentage throws. You're supposed to complete those at what, like 40%, 35, somewhere around there. So maybe you're a bit spoiled. It's just weird because that was kind of Nuss's thing. Yeah. It felt like early on was, but but again, you're also missing your main deep threat. Yeah. Like Chris Hilton is your fucking. We're burner. also spoiled because He's for the last six Brazil. years. Four the last six years, you've had a number one overall draft pick and a number two overall draft pick. Yeah, yeah. A yeah. um, couple of Heismans. I mean, yeah. fuck, dude. By the way, like, <laughs> one one thing that I think when you go back and look at, at film, you're going to see how freely they rotated. Like, we can talk about the running game, but the reality is Caleb Jackson didn't really touch the ball until the second half. Yeah. Same with Josh Williams. Josh Williams only had four carries. Yeah. First round back out was they were dumb. dumb. Yeah. The the second the first carry of the game was was Williams, and then the the second play of the game, Caden Durham was in the game yeah. on the second snap. There's an interesting so, disconnect between the faith shown in Josh Williams by giving him 18, and then the doubt shown by being like after the first game we actually don't trust him to run the ball. He, that he's much. your safety belt. He's the guy that you, that can go in three downs. You're not going to question his pass blocking. He can, he can make the short yardage. But that, I mean, he's he's their safety flag right but now. But we've seen Josh Williams run it really well in the past, though. Dude. He had our second longest carry tonight for twelve, 12 yards. yards. He had four carries for nineteen <laughs> yards. Caleb had Caleb had nine for nineteen. By the way, he was tied for the longest. Nuss's run was God officially twelve. We run that. We ran the ball like shit tonight. Awful. Dude. I mean, and look, honestly, bro, they ran the ball way too well against you. They rushed it down our throat. When I look, when I was watching that, and when I saw Guillory get hurt. They were shoving our D tackles in the backfield. So Colin Guggenheim from Nichols today ran 25 times for 145 yards, two touchdowns. He had the 67. Didn't yards. have it on my bingo card, dude. You didn't have that on your bingo Did card? Did not have a Guggenheim <laughs> game on my bingo card, dude. I can just I told you this before. So I, I went to the Dome when Catholic played Curtis in, in a state championship game. They played back-to-back years, or maybe it was two out of three years, and Catholic beat him in the first one, then Curtis got him in the second one. That second one, Colin Guggenheim went the fuck off. I mean, like, no. Fuck yeah, yeah he's no been running idea. that offense so, since yeah, fourth seriously, grade. Seriously, yeah. so it's like whenever I saw him go, I was like, that that is a very natural, gifted, powerful runner. I'm not surprised that he I will success. say this. I will say this on just a Louisiana thing that I loved. Are you doing a Trump impression? No, you know what the problem <laughs> the hands? is? I will, no. say this. I will say this. You know what the, the problem Louisiana is? thing I love. You know what like, the problem is? Totally <laughs> no, you know what it is? It's, it's, it's not a Trump impression. It's a Shane Gillis Trump impression. Okay. Shane Gillis. Did you watch him on? <laughs> yes. Did you watch him last Tony. night? No, on Kill Tony. Watch him last night. Oh, He's so God, fucking funny so that I'm like, uh, I, I can't help it. I just crib from people that I think are funny. <laughs> and so it's like, I think he's so funny that it just naturally works its way in, dude. <laughs> The Gillis Trump is fucking undefeated. That's exactly what you were doing, man. That's what I'm saying. I will say this. I didn't even know you were doing it. You fucking did it. That's what I'm saying. I can't help it. But anyway, I will say this, though. I loved seeing that stat where they put up on the screen where it's like LSU had like 92 Louisiana players. Yeah. Nichols had like 95. And Guggenheim is representative of that. We got a lot of great athletes in this state. Yeah. And Guggenheim was fucking fired up. To get to play, I mean, he's a J- he's a John Curtis beast, right? Didn't get the fucking love he wanted. Rebo is the perfect Nichols coach. Agreed. Rebo fucking brings him in. He's like, bro, I fucking got you. We're going to do it. And tonight, 
you gave Guggenheim the stage and he said, fuck you, motherfuckers. I'm, I'm going to fucking I'm, I'm going to shine the same way I shine in the fucking Superdome against yeah. Catholic. Like, I'm going to do my fucking thing. And I like that from like a Louisiana perspective and an, and an opposite perspective. The guys who from Louisiana playing on LSU's defense wanted to show him why he couldn't play at LSU. Yeah, but Guggenheim probably fucked him up in high school, too, dude. It was so rough. That, that you got, with these in-state games, as, as much as – I get as that like, for the first half. As much as I'm first like quarter, they're maybe. a bit unfair, yes, they're not a bit unfair. They're very unfair. But at the same time, if you ask the Nichols players, do you want to play this game to a man, they would say yes because they want to be entire stadium – they want to get a chance to fuck up LSU, and Guggenheim represented all of that in a single player, in my opinion. It's the game that they make stories they talk about the rest of their life. Bro, Guggenheim <laughs> can always tell people he went for a 67-yard tud yeah. in yeah. Death Valley. Yeah. Um, are you, Shout out, Guggenheim. You want to run if you're a part of the Guggenheim family, not <laughs> the Art Mavens. But the fucking Sorry, South Louisiana um, I'm, I'm, fucking <laughs> blue-collar motherfucker. Shout out, dude. Um, just a couple of things, like notable things from tonight. Uh, somehow I missed this last week. I guess when you're like in the stands, why well, it's tough when you're in the stands, you don't see everything. But Bo Bordelon, they put an, the 89 on him and, and they used him as a blocking tight end. Did you notice that last week? Yeah. You I did? Mean, okay. We talked Bro, about it on I Henny's that podcast. Film for four okay. hours and I didn't see that shit. I, I mean, I just, I, Sometimes it sucks being in the All I thought is we're fucking missing Mac Markway. They should have given him more reps but so look, he didn't fucking transfer. There's no doubt, but we've always done that. I mean, we used to put Doug Planchard at tight end. Then we put your boy Josh Dorsett at tight end. We, we, also, we had two and, and we'll, jerseys and, and, on the and, 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 well, and you're forgetting we put T-Bob Aber at fullback. He wore 49, I know. You, you were going to play fullback that year. He I mean, wore 49. Wore I, know. I remember a punt deal. return. You got confused for Kirsten deal. Pittman. No, that's not. Yeah, that's Or true. kick return. That's I liked it. It gets you another blocker on the field. I I like that. I mean, I think I just think back to the third and one. I brought this up a bunch. Like the third and one call last week where Emory got t- – it was pimped in a – I want to say this, though. I want to say this about yep. the third and one call. Pimped it fucked up, but I hated the push from the rest of the O-line. I was about to say, I don't even know if, if we get the if, first down. Yeah, okay. even if pimped and blocks I well, don't we I do. don't know if you get the first down. I, I, Everybody 100%. got stalemated. Every got, single person got, got stalemated. Not only got stalemated, they got pushed in the back. And, and, and the entire difference last <clears> week between LSU and USC's D-line, and this is a quality difference, and that's why I gave Baker credit last week, and I don't give him as much credit this week, is it was obvious last week LSU was operating at a personnel disadvantage with D-line and the secondary, and they game-planned it well. But, like, USC guys, you try to come up. They were extending. They would take on two-on-one blocks. They would anchor, and they would fucking extend. I saw almost none of that out of LSU. And so, like, yeah, like, Pimpton gets the blame because he should. I mean, he fucked up the block, and that's the guy that made nobody the tackle. The job but nobody else. Yeah, exactly. He kind of he kind of became a bit of a, a get-out-of-jail-free card for the rest of the crew. Um, oh my God! Yeah. Here we have Boe yeah. there, Nick Scalfo. The Colonels are in the house. Oh no, dude! My little brother and the Colonels have showed up. How in the world? Boe, Boe Nichols plus fifty-two. Good for him. Bro. Easy cover. Easy cover. Never in question. Get the fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> fuck out of here, dude. Did he ever win a game at Let's Nichols? Go. Nah, they didn't win many. They didn't win oh, many. Man. <laughs> oh, man. I'm just being honest, man. Like, oh, man. but I love Tim Rebo. I'm glad that he's there. Um, Rebo turned so around. So, Lacey, um, uh, Guillory. Oh, Jordan Allen was injured as well in this game. We'll have to check on that. Um, Nuss got dinged up. It looked like he had a dead leg. It looked like he took a knee to the back of the leg. Was that what it was, or was it, a, was it a cramp? They, they said cramp, but then when you walk him on a sideline, he was still stretching out. To yeah. me, it looked like, and I went back and rewatched the play. It'd be weird he got, for a, him to be he got a dead leg. It would okay. be weird for him to be crampy. He got a knee to the back yeah, of the leg. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Nathan Dybert kicked off. Remember, Dybert last year was your kickoff guy, tore his ACL against AM. Oh, it wasn't, uh, making Bur- a tackle. It wasn't Burrell. Right? No, so Aaron, no. Bur- Aaron, did we say Burrell or Burrell? I don't know yet which one it is. I don't know. I don't. He was great last week. He actually made this get the touchdown saving tackle on the the kickoff after the which was actually the, an incredible tackle. It was an incredible play. He they said it on the broadcast. He got injured last week, and so uh, Dybert, who was kicking in fall camp, still working back from the ACL. Dybert kicked off tonight. Looked pretty good. No, yeah, he looked good. Um, yeah, you know, basically just wanted to kick through the end zone. He did. So it was good to see Dybert back there. 
Um, Tyree Adams started at uh, left guard in place of, uh, of Garrett Dellinger. Um, Which I got to be fair, I'm they, excited to watch the Tyree Adams film because I, I know I know that. Yeah. Well, you're going to explain it, but I, I just I, I didn't realize that live. I just, I just took it for I just took it for granted. They started Tyree Adams and then they put Paul Mabenga in at left guard. I'm trying to see in my notes where they put him in. Um, it was late in the first half. Mabenga. Uh, but they put Paul Mabenga in at left guard and then Adams did go back in later. Um, we, we got to see Ricky Collins throw a really nice ball when he went in cold off yeah. the sideline. I mean, trying to get, get well, points for the first half, but then Damian Hera, Ramos missed it, the missed the field goal. A bit, a bit of like uh, just built in interest is the fact that they went with Collins over Swan, right? Because when Swan transferred in, the idea was, oh yeah, you're bringing in the guy yeah. that's played and like what you heard Swan's camp, not going to be freaked Collins. out. And it was like, well, but yeah, but they, it was like yeah. a they battle. Ro- they rotated them. Look, man, I went to every practice they let us go to. And every time they went team periods, they rotated those two guys interchangeably. That's what I'm saying. So, but now we but, know but who the actual but, two But is. when you watch them, it's so obvious. Like, A.J. Swan is a check down Charlie. He, he's not fast. He's not athletic. He doesn't have a great Chad arm. Pennington. <laughs> but Collins is dynamic with his with his feet. He The first practice we saw, he threw a deep ball touchdown to Kylan Billiot. That was a fucking dime. You're like, oh, that's different. Like, you know what I mean? Like you, yeah. When you can just... When you can see arm, it's, I mean, you're a great quarterback, but when you can see arm talent, like it's just so clear. Ricky Collins is the higher ceiling, so it's like, yeah, you want to play that kid. Like, get, with it too. Yeah, get get that kid in there when you can. So, but it's also like I was hoping we were going to get to see him play the whole second half. What happens if it's next week against South Carolina? Yeah. Right? I mean, it's going to be Collins, I think. Yes. Right. But like, I did, but but up to this point, I wasn't sure. Did yeah. it throw you off when all three went to start warming up? Collins was warming up, dude. Swan was warming up, Hurley was warming up. I was like, good like, God, who's going in? Like we don't even know. Put Hurley in the 16-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> Who also is a really good player. He's just way, he's just inconsistent, man. There was there was a seven-on-seven seven where they were doing a goal line. He threw a beautiful touchdown pass to Tradez, and the next play he got intercepted in the back of the end zone by P.J. Look Brooklyn. at that. Brooks rushing says bingo. Oh, at this he, point? Had a, he had a Colin Hurley reference on the bingo car. There we go. Oh, he had it on the bingo car? Congratulations. At this point? I want Tradez Green running number two at receiver. Bro, Tradez Green Why? is a big motherfucker. He's, look, he is so freakishly talented, athletic. He's not a tight end. He right now, I mean, he can it. run with anybody at a number two in a slot receiver or run your deep post. So, the guy is a freak. So, Dick, you know who he fucking looks like who balled out today? For fucking Syracuse. Hold on, I got to pull up my notes here. I don't know a single player that plays <laughs> oh, for Syracuse. Yeah, Syracuse reference. <laughs> no, what no, is no, no, this? No. Uh, Aronde Gadsden. Oh yeah, that guy. Aronde Gat. No, no, fuck you, motherfuckers. <laughs> you think I'm fucking joking? I'm not, I don't think look you're up, fucking joking. Look up Aronde Gatson after this game. He was one of the best tight ends of the country last year. He balled out against Georgia Tech today, and he is the exact same build as Trey as Green. He's bigger and stronger than everybody else. And every fucking time Syracuse needed to play today, they went to Ronde Gatson and he fucking came through for him. Tradez Green is going to be that player, but on a much larger stage. I'm going to be so interested to see what happens with Tradez with basketball, man. Like, he loves basketball and wants to play basketball. But, like, bro, when you're 6'7 in basketball, you're just a guy. Yeah. Fuck you, basketball. You know what I mean? But, like, his first love is basketball. But, like, yeah, this my thing, first love was basketball, too. I get it. <laughs> I get it. I mean, until I was 14, I didn't get any color. I used to have fucking high socks, headband, fucking deep shorts. I used to be Mike Bibby out there. Fucking you were never Mike post. Bibby. You were never Mike Bibby. I was kind of Mike Bibby, you guys. Mike Bibby. I was the only white kid on the team. <laughs> I was a baller, dude. <laughs> you got to give up eventually, though, trade ass. Come on, bro. Just well, no, commit to my football. deal with him is like he's such a freak athlete. He needs to be on the field more. He doesn't feel like a tight end. But what if he can block? Then fuck it. Then, then yeah, you put we him in a tight end and you create a mismatch. None of them can really block at this point. I mean, point. can Travis Kelsey really block that great? He's not bad. He's not bad. Exactly. So that's all Trade is green. Okay. has to be. It's not but we're bad. all bad. He's, yeah, it has to be not bad. You were pretty good. I you was because I was angry. Traps. You motherfucker. You big, no, but sexy I, motherfucker. He's, I just God want him on the field. Dude, Dick, you, mm, ah. Dick, I just want him so on the field. Dude. Dick, Dick taught me so much back in the day, dude. He's my fucking guy right here, boys. You don't even fucking know. This dude was a fucking killer. Goddamn killer. That's how he ended up catching all those fucking tuds in the natty. Yeah. Do you want to go through some of the game? Yeah, let's go game flow. Let's do game flow. Just we're not going to spend a ton of time on this because we'll make sure we we've got about uh, we got about twenty minutes, uh, forty minutes. I'm sorry. Let's make um, sure we get to the super chats. We'll Last get to them. I got them. I got them. Look, they 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 all they auto log here. I got. Yeah, them. that's what I'm saying. So we're good. Yeah. I got them. Um, all right. So LSU got the ball. 
Nichols deferred, by the way. I don't want to talk about it. How do you feel about deferring or receiving? I always oh, wait, want Nick, the defense wait, wait, to go wait, out first. Nichols, yeah. Yeah. Because it's the fucking right play. Anyway. It's just. All right, LSU got 18 yards on first down to C.J. Daniels. They missed uh, Nuss through Shelton Sampson out of bounds, and they ended up punting. Uh, Nichols got the ball, and this is where you went. They went three and out. P.J. Woodland had a TFL. Woodland played well. Woodland, Woodland's Woodland, good. Woodland had a TFL, and he had the forced fumble later. The thing yeah. is. Remember, he, like, it was a catch, and then he, he, he fucking, stripped it out. He stra- stripped and recovered so, it. So that is also. That kid's got to play more. He's building. He's Mississippi boy. He's yeah. building upon the hype that he had in camp, and honestly, we need Sage Ryan back at safety. Yes. And we need Stamps and Woodland at corner. Or Zy Alexander, By the way, whoever. so Zy Alexander, we, Zy did, back. he yes. did play corner in the second yeah. half. That's what I'm saying. We need Late corners, in the game. though. We cannot have Sage at corner. We need Sage at safety. I agree with you. That's his best. His best. Your, your best scenario would be healthy Zy Alexander, Ashton Stamps at corner with Woodland there we're as really, well. Yeah, fit and you move yeah. Sage to safety. I agree. It's, that is his natural position. Yeah. He's never played it at LSU. It's unfortunate because he came here as a five-star, and he has done everything that for the team, right? Like it's a rough, it's a rough moment he's, for Sage. He's played it's nickel. Tough, he's yeah, played corner. He's done tough, everything except the thing he's the best at doing because they, that's just what they've needed him to do. Yeah, he's probably getting fucking paid though. Good on him. <laughs> I might be surprised. Um. All right. So anyway, this is where we got the be safety. Surprised? I heard Slade Roy. Well, never mind. Doesn't matter. <laughs> all right. Doesn't so this matter. is where they got the safety on the the high punt. So you're up two nothing. Get the ball. Two nothing. One thing that I don't that should not be ignored. LSU has a return game again with Xavier Thomas. Awesome. Xavier Thomas is he's awesome. fantastic. We finally he's have a return. Game. He, he's not the, scared, dude. He looks no. so comfortable back there. After the, and he makes the safety, the correct, he makes the correct decision. Fifty-one every time. yards. 51. Fifty-one yards after the safety, he makes the correct decision every time. If it's a fair catch, does he need a bail? Does he need a return? He's great. Um, you went about eight yards deep. It was in. The game. That I was gonna say that was my one. I That's did have one it. thing. I'm not. He, he, he was. He was Bruh, you a little let, aggressive. Hey, put booby in. Let booby spin. You can't fucking hold that man down. Okay, but run the ball against Nicholas. Exactly. <laughs> so let fucking Xavier Thomas return it, and then fucking run the ball. That's the only reason I was okay. Don't be it. a bitch. The second, the second play of the second drive is when they threw the first screen pass to um to Jawan Johnson. He got four yards. Brian Kelly said they were gonna use him. They did. Hey, fuck Nichols. He, he he caught all three of his targets, had a touchdown reception. Um, I mean, yardage wise, great. he might have been total yardage close to the top of the running backs. I thought he played pretty decent for a guy that he didn't get a, it twice. He, he caught three passes. He did not have a rushing attempt, yeah. though. Uh, let me make sure I have that right. Yeah, he did not have a rushing attempt. We saw Caden Durham get his first rushing attempt in the second half. Um, we sure didn't fucking saw. run the ball. We just tried to throw it. I, I we realized we couldn't run the ball. It was Caden and that's look. That's the only thing I'm frustrated about. I wanted to go out and build confidence, show everybody what you can do, it's dominate. Amazing. Man, That's the tough part about this game about. was Nichols in the first half had two long fucking drives that ate up. Uh, first one, 15, bro, 15 they, had bro. Thir- they had a 13 play, 13 play, 5 yard drive that ate up eight minutes. Yeah. They had a so they went back to back touchdown drives that were 13 plays, 84 yards, 717, then 13 plays, 75 yards, 759. That's insanity. I mean, yeah, yeah, they like that is two, two possessions ate up, ate up an entire quarter of the first half. Yeah. So, hey, all right, boy. This is our guy up from uh, from Huntsville. Yep. He's doing the Lord's work up there in Alabama. Hold down North Alabama. Right. God bless him. God bless him. Y'all He's be got safe. the Star be David safe. on him. He's not a Guggenheim fam. <laughs> he's got the Star David, but he's not a Guggenheim fam, guys. Relax. Yeah, he's so stupid. It's true. Uh, all right. Um. Oh, this was and so this was the drive where Trey Des ended up scoring a touchdown. So. I love Which the is play. Funny. So this is very funny though, because when he scored, I was like, "Who the fuck is Green?" I thought it was a receiver. I was like, I was like yeah, "What receiver is like, that?" I'm like, "What receiver is Green?" I'm walking around talking to the bar. I'm like, "Who's Green? Who's Green?" And then like so, ten minutes later, I was like, "Oh fuck, that's true." So <laughs> right, let me give you a big, let me give you a big picture takeaway, okay? Because like I know, like you were on air during all of fall camp when we had availability. So yeah, you, I so you, I you never got anything. to go. I, watch I went anything. to everything. So when when. Trey Des had one target against USC. And, like, you want to talk about play call, that was a beautiful moment where Sloan dialed up a deep shot where they had Trey Des isoed. And 
credit USC. They brought pressure. Nuss backpedal and just sailed it. Yeah. It was like all he could I do. I did not love Nuss against Cover Zero last week. But, yeah, but, but they had a moment where yeah. you created a mismatch, and I, that was creative. I loved it. But it was one play that Trey Dez got yeah. in. Like, he was not on the field otherwise. Um, yeah. I'm out. So yeah, all right, go go for it. Yeah, Richard's yeah, gotta go to the post game. Right, Love you, man. Richard's gotta go to post game. All right, turn so, it down. That's Mike Four. So, but after Love you, Dick. That's nice. Little pat on the butt. But but literally in this game, Trades Green was in there in the. I mean, that was the second possession of the game. They're throwing him the ball. So, I think one one of the things that was a very conscious part of tonight was even early in the game and it's part of why I'm I'm not it's part of why I'm not overreacting to this man like Caden Durham was on the field the second offensive snap Trades Green was in there in the second series like we saw Deshaun Spears in the first defensive series we saw Kylan Jackson out there early it wasn't like they waited to get a lead to start playing the young guys like they were fucking out there the whole game I'm with you on the offensive line I'm with you on that not running because your your first offensive line struggled throughout but Bro, they rotated so many guys tonight. Well, I'm being clear. I'm not. I, I don't have a problem with rotation. Like the best guys got to play. If the young guys are the best guys, no, I don't you know that play. it was that. I think it was just this was an opportunity to get those guys experience because huh. you knew you were going to win the game, and so it was like put them in in a moment when they're out there running with the ones and when the game's still in doubt instead of just when you're taking a knee and hand the ball off in the fourth. I mean, they they rotated freely throughout this ball game tonight. I mean, Josh Williams had four carries. Like, if you wanted to load up Caleb Jackson and Josh Williams and run the ball 20 times in the first half, you could have done it. They didn't. They threw the ball. They got a lot of guys involved. And I thought it was a like, I just, I just don't, I'm going to go back to where we started. There's a lot of people who probably just started watching this, but like, go back to where we started. You asked, do you feel better or worse? I said, I don't feel any different at all because I guess I have a very tempered expectation. I watch your fucking teams play these games your whole time there. Yeah. How many times have I watched Les Miles teams fuck around with Furman in FCS teams? No, I just don't care. I just don't like, no, no, I, I know. No, that's no, why no, I'm just no, not, no, I just no, don't no. care. I don't care that, but, that but, it looked the way it did tonight. But where I'm disappointed is simply that this was a game and these games in uh, theory – are games to work on your weaknesses. I hear you. Don't fall back on your strengths. I trust Nuss. I trust Kyron Lacey. I trust CJ Daniels. Like, I trust Aaron Anderson after last week. I Aaron know, was great tonight, too, I, I, That's what way. I'm saying. I know those guys can make plays when it matters. So you're talking about subbing guys, but I'm saying, like, fucking – promote your weaknesses and show me that your that the weaknesses can have success against the teams that you should have success against don't get freaked out and then start just being like okay we're going to throw the ball and we're going to rely on Nuss and Kyron Lacey which is like i mean you got to win the game so i, I get how Joe yeah. Sloan falls into that but at the same time i mean brother it was 16 to 14. I know, dude. Hey, Late in the second quarter. Well, that's so, why I keep that's I mean, why I keep going back to the damage was done in the first half. And at the beginning of the second half, the damage was done. Huh? I'm saying the damage what, was done in what, the first half. This is, yeah. this is out, oh, this, yeah. Bro, yeah. This is okay. an Alabama no. fan right here. Hey, yeah. Alabama's burning. I know. Got it. Yeah. Got, it. Got, it. Uh, got it. You're not listening, Mascara. All right. All right. All right. Bad. All right. Fuck you, Thanks for coming out. Y'all drive Fuck safe going home, up. okay? Oh, they wow. came off from Alabama. Wow. <laughs> so, Damn, all right. Y'all be good, guys. Be good. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. So, um, I mean, I, or, or T, like, maybe this is just what the team is going to be. Like, no there's shit. But, That's but, why we were but, adjusting win losses as the game what, went on. But what, I said what, it after last week. I but think what Kelly nine- said this week is on Thursday evening, he said, I think the running, the rushing offense is not only going to be the strength of the offense, but the strength of the team. Those are his words on Thursday of this week. I, now, I agree with you. Like, not true. I, I don't, I would have thought through two games. Caleb Jackson would have already made a statement to where we would have had to pay attention to him. We haven't seen that so far. It was going to be John Emery, and then he fucking tore his ACL. John Emery, I thought, looked really good in the second half. He he was the best player on the field in the third quarter last week. And it was running and catching. He had a a 10-yard catch and run. He ran hard. But every time he touched the ball, he was falling forward. He was making people miss. I mean, again, I'm – 
I was so fucked up by the news on Tuesday, right? Because we had that weird Las Vegas time warp where I'm like, oh, fuck, John Emery tore his ACL in the beginning of the fourth. No. Like, I, I was, no, that, that, that's what <laughs> yeah, I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, fuck, John Emery. And so I'm watching the film, like, where'd he tear it? Where'd he tear? I don't see it. He's popping up here. He's walking off here. Where'd he tear his ACL? I don't see it. Because he was literally the best player on the field in the third quarter yeah. last week. And I've heard, like, I know some people think, oh, well, if you t- you've heard the thing, take away the big run. Well, how about take away the, the, the five yard loss where he got hit while he was taking yeah, the handoff? You, you like, can't say no, take away yeah, the big no, run. It's like, it's I know, what I know, it is. I know you agree. I know you agree. I'm just saying, you can't. That's a, John that's a was great. logical fallacy. Anyway, um, I used to want to go through any of this. I, look, trade has scored. Um, they scored the, the back-to-back long drives. You're in a 16-14 game. It's a you, bad look for Blake you put Baker. Together, you put the together. The bottom line is that's a bad look for Blake Baker to give up multiple drives of double-digit plays in seven to eight minutes. Like, that's actually insane. Yeah. Do you know how fucking hard it is to put together an offensive drive? Yet another disconcerting signal penalty. With a fucking touchdown. It's 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 so rare that like i remember the times in my entire playing career in which we put together drives that were double digit plays of seven to eight minutes um will campbell had a false start you gave up a fourth down conversion yet another disconcerting signals penalty you they missed got a, one too you, I know, you missed a field goal i mean there was a lot of there was a lot of not great, like what you would expect on a – I mean, like, how about this, too? You go play a game in Vegas on Sunday, quick turnaround, short week, six days. You're playing an opponent nobody gives a fuck about because nobody gives a fuck about playing Nichols because Nichols has never won anything of significance ever. They've never won anything of significance. It's a, it's – Right, they they won the Southland again. They've never won anything of significance. So, so, so. By the way, we're doing we're doing a show. Don't make me th- don't don't make me do to your brother what I did to uh, what's his name. Remember what I like? Don't make me do your brother. Would you th- dare? Fuck yeah, I would. We're doing a show. I care way more about the three thousand people watching live than these two assholes. Wow. When we're done, I'll talk to him. No, 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 sit down. You, you can sit. You can sit, but you're gonna let us do the show. Keep going. All right. But I love you, Bo. I do. But we're doing a show. I love you too, God. I'm salty. But we're doing a show. Um, 23rd in the FCS. 23rd in the FCS, right. dude. Show some respect. T25 in the FCS. That Nichols is T25 in the FCS. Let's show a little respect to your motherfucker. 95 Louisiana players on the roster, dog. We've been here. From the fucking boot. Swords up. Swords up, baby. Carlos. Go. I'm getting close, bro. Go. I'm getting really fucking close. Go. I'm, I'm trying to respect the fact that Go. that's your blood. Motherfucker. All right. Um. No, fuck it. Whatever. Do whatever you want to do. Do 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 whatever you want. Let's to go do. to super chats. I mean, the game flow doesn't matter because here. Oh, All right, Matt, Matt. Hold on. Before we get to super chats, the game flow doesn't matter because, like I said, the damage was done in the first half. Nobody gonna be happy with us throwing six tuds nobody's gonna be happy with the with the final score because at the end of the day at the beginning of the third quarter guggenheim wrapped off a fucking 67 yard touchdown was it 23 21 and that was a bad fucking feeling so let's yeah the, the long run to start the second half was not good but then lsu took control at that point again All right. yes but i was telling people the bar tonight they're like freaking out i'm like guys lsu's gonna win the game like in these games Eventually, you lean, you lean, you lean, you take over. I've been through so many shitty less miles. It's, it's games. why I don't care. So why I care a little bit, why, 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 why I do care is you didn't work on your weaknesses. Is that you didn't work on your weaknesses, dude. Good. Is you, didn't, you didn't work on your weaknesses, dude. So let's it. go to the Super Chats. All right. Uh, Jacob Thompson, got to love seeing the Tigers win tonight. How about Nuss tonight played amazing? Let's go beat the Gamecocks next next week. Six I like, touch, the, I like the positivity. Six touchdowns, dude. Fuck it, there's, there's six three yards, six touch. touchdowns, man. Kyron Lacey had three touchdown receptions. Trey Davis Green caught a touchdown. Juwan Johnson's played running back for four fucking days, caught a touchdown. Like, there were good things. I get it. It sucked they didn't run the ball. It sucked you gave up a million rushing yards. That's not good. I get it. But I also don't fucking care. It was Nichols. This is a game nobody cares about. 
No, no disrespect. Nobody wanted to play. It's just the thing you have on the schedule because you have to have it on the fucking schedule. So I'm not going to overreact to anything I see. If you go, here's my point. You go to Columbia next week and play a South Carolina team that just went on the road and got a road conference Keep win. The fuck out how of how hard is it to win on the road in conference? It's very hard. It's hard. South Carolina, who was dog shit last week at home against Old Dominion, went to Kentucky and skull fucked Kentucky. Go on the road on Saturday, beat South Carolina by double digits. We're sitting here. People are happy as fuck going, hey, man. Hey, just look. look. Now you got UCLA and they suck dick. And then you got South Alabama yeah. and you get an open day. Just yeah. wait. That old Miss comes in. Just yeah. keep getting better. We've seen this with BK the last yeah. two years. They lose the first game and then they keep getting Tell better. Them. Like, that's it's the same fucking song and dance. But it's kind of real. It's a, but I know, but it's why I don't. It's why I'm not overreacting. Yes, it's sir. why that's why I'm I, I'm not like I'm not sunshine pumping. Fuck, man, I'm the last person that's a sunshine pumper. But I'm gonna tell you, I just I'm not moved by this game. Good, bad, right, wrong, win, loss. I just well, loss would have been bad. Loss, I would have been yes. Okay, loss, I would, loss would have been very bad. I mean Notre Dame, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> You want to talk about outhouse to the penthouse? College football is a fickle mischief, dude. Yeah, I guess I did. I put the emphasis on the wrong All right. syllable. All right. Uh, Joshua Ivy said, the thing is, BK was never a great hire. And I said this to no one who remembers it a year ago. Of course, because nobody knows who the fuck you are, nor do we care. Uh, but no one can tell me Kiffin wouldn't do better with this roster. Okay, well, if no one can tell you, then there's no point in having the conversation. Thanks, Joshua Ivy. Fuck off. I would Juan say this, was T-Bob barefoot no, 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 at the no, no, sportsbook no, 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 in Mandalay no, 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 Bay. No, 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 no. Hold on, before you get oh, oh, relax, relax. Before you get that, there is. We got twenty minutes. We, we, do you not agree that? Do you feel like Kiffin would have been better hired? I would have today? been perfectly fine with them hiring Lane Kiffin two two years ago. I would have been. I said it. I would have been perfectly fine with that hire. I would have been perfectly fine with okay, that. I thought he you was, were not. No, he was rehabilitated on with with Saban's offense. He went and had success at FAU. I, you desperately needed um, a, an innovative offense, which you got. And I, yeah, I would have been perfectly fine with Lane Kiffin okay. if they'd hire him. Gonna... But, he, but you didn't hire him. And so you got Brian Kelly on a 10 year deal that's not fucking going anywhere. Not going anywhere. So, like, the, the point about it, I, I, was doing a, I was doing an interview this week with someone who was like, is Brian Kelly on the I was like, fuck no. I there's agree. A, a, we don't have sixty million dollars no hanging chance. around. There's I agree. Zero chance. I agree. Like, you are financially bound to Brian Kelly for right, wrong, good, bad, better, worse for the next decade. Hey, so like, hey, Gen Z, hey, Gen Z, marriage fucking matters. Okay, <laughs> sometimes you commit to a person and you have to fucking stick to that person till death do us part. Juan said was T. Bob barefoot thin. at the sports book in Mandalay Bay on Matt's Bingo. God damn week. it. Yes, I was. I've talked about it a lot, okay? I was barefoot. I'm not happy about it. It was a bad Saturday. The Daylight Beach Club sent me a little sideways. I'm wearing fucking these stupid-ass shoes because one of y'all motherfuckers stole my Wolf and Shepherds. Yeah, I get it, guys. I get it. I fucked up in Vegas. I never want to go back to the hellscape of a city. I'm fucking sorry, okay? I was barefoot. I was in a fucking teal tank top that the Daylight Beach Club gave me when I begged the workers for a fucking shirt. It was a low moment. And guess what? what? I had people that I love that tried to interact with me that said that I big dog them because I couldn't fucking think straight. Yeah, I'm fucking sorry. I make mistakes. I'm a human. I'm not Jesus. Okay? I'm Barabbas. Jesus was a human. My fucking bad, But he was dude. also God. You know, can I throw a little bit more on on your pile of shit right now too uh you were supposed to come meet us at circus swim on saturday night we had a cabana and everything it's gonna be awesome and you didn't fucking make it i fell asleep dude i had to go to bed i was done dude i wish i wish whoever took my shoes would give them back guys i spent so much insecure time trying to find shoes to wear with shorts tonight and i had nothing because you took the only shoes that i felt confident with shorts tonight in can I, like, legit question? I mean, do you ever give any thought to what you wear? Yes, I give a lot of thought. I see you wear the same shirt like four days a week. 
because I'm fucking stressing. And so you fall back. It's like LSU tonight. LSU started stressed. What did they do? They were like, fuck it, Garrett Nussmeyer. <laughs> Poor Alondra. Gary, they're like, Shout oh, out fuck Alondra, it. by the way. They're like, fuck it. We're going to throw it to Garrett Nussmeyer and Kyron Lacey. It's the same shit. I'm Joe Sloan when it comes to fucking wardrobe. Oh, shit. Run game's not working. Might as well fucking depend on my weapons, uh, even though it's nickels. Man. Maybe I could take a style chance, but I don't think I can. Because you motherfuckers are going to clown a, me. What would be a style chance for you? I just wanted to wear jeans and boots tonight, dude. Why didn't you? Because my jeans were in the wash. Why? And just LSU's offensive struggles writ Why large. would that stop you? Because they were wet. Do you only have one pair of jeans? I have one pair of jeans. I bought it two weeks ago. It's the first pair of jeans I bought in five years. And I've seen you wear jeans. No, you haven't. Yeah. No, not until SEC Media Days. Me and Billy no. Lucci went to the mall, and we went to Viore, and we went to Dillard's. No, because you got Billy those Lu boots, and, and you've worn jeans with those boots. I've seen you only after SEC Media no. Days. No, I swear to fucking God, I just bought the first you can't pair. Swear of to fucking God. No, I can't. I can't say GD. I swear, but you say fucking God. I swear because that's my I'm fucking telling boy, the cannon. dude. That's my fucking boy. I'm dude. telling the cannon. God's my fucking boy, dude. I'm out. Go tell the cannon. Shout out, GD. That's my boy. We're fine. Anyway, next super chat, guys. Don't um, fucking examine me. Shelby, what's going on? Nussmeyer had six touchdowns, but needs to get healthy. Jesse said, "Go get Saban." Uh, Roll Tide ninety nine said, "Never has a forty two to sixteen victory felt more like a loss. Bad in the first three quarters to blow it in the fourth against you. Blow it open in the fourth against wow, USA." Interesting. An Alabama fan who's like openly showing vulnerability here on our show. Uh, Peter, what's good? Lucas A. Bear Garrett's a good quarterback. Go Tigers. Yeah, Greg, Garrett's awesome. Winless in but SEC again, play okay, with this defense. On, pathetic. Time out, time out. You are not going to let me get through this Garrett, show. Garrett There's is no awesome. way we're getting through Guys, all of it. Garrett is awesome. But I already knew that. I didn't want to rely on Garrett tonight. All right, next. Uh, Greg said, "Winless in SEC play with this defense, pathetic." I mean, didn't didn't this defense hold Lincoln Riley's offense to twenty points until the final eight yeah, seconds I'm a not, week ago? I'm not out. I'm not out. I'm not out on this. I'm not out I'm on this out LSU here, defense quite yet. Now, if if Jacoby and Guillory is out for a while, that's a problem. If Jacoby Guillory's out, eight and four. What's the eight and four? I mean, that's the record. If no, I get it. But what, how did, what's the what's the other three losses? Uh, Alabama, Ole Miss, and either Oklahoma at A and M. Yeah, either Oklahoma or at A and M at Florida. Uh, <laughs> Florida's pretty fucking shitty too. They're you shitty. So that's what I'm saying. How I'm did not, DJ Lagway do today? I, I didn't could, see it I, all. I could still throw at Florida in there if you really want to, but I wasn't going to. I mean, I'll remind you that LSU did lose at a shitty A and M team after beating Bama two years ago. Bro, we know fucking nothing. Notre Dame beat Texas A&M yeah, in conversation true. last week, true. and they got their fucking dicks yeah. kicked in by Northern Illinois. You know, the rest <laughs> tried to fucking cheat him at the end of the game. Like, yeah, shit, it, it's college football, which today was an incredible day of college football. Let's go through Super Chats, and maybe we get to that. Brambo said SC has a legit pass rush. Next week will be real. South Carolina's defensive front uh, is pretty good. That They're freshman good. Uh, that's coming off the edge for South Carolina is a goddamn dog. Uh, but again, I don't worry about LSU from a pass protection standpoint. I want to see them run the ball. Game day is going to South Carolina. Uh, Cliff Nelson. Wait, yeah, Chuck, Chuck told me, dude, that, that fucking game day is going to be at South Carolina I don't next know, week. I don't know why. It's the first time ever, but College Game Day announced this evening they are going to Columbia wow. next week for LSU, South Carolina, and I can't make sense of that. Like, is there nothing else on the slate next week? Well, I've heard it's a week slate. I haven't looked it up, but at the same time, Williams Bryce is a very underrated stadium. I agree. They got the train. Is, is, is the cockaboos. Is um what a name that's, that's what the cockaboos. Hey, is that Saturday the Saturday last... is for the cocks. Hey, is that is 08 the last time LSU played in Columbia? Yeah, when Steven Garcia got tackled by, by the, the ref. ref. I tore my ACL that game. Oh, that's where you tore your ACL? Yeah, I remember. Oh, wow. I was warming up pregame, and uh, one of my best friends from high school was blackout drunk, and he was like, You fucking fat ass, blah blah blah. And then I looked at him and we made on contact, and I was like Sam? And he was like, <laughs> Sam? Oh, I'm so sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Sam? And he immediately felt bad. Was that was during the game? Yeah. When, after you tore your ACL? Oh, yeah. They were talking so much shit on the sideline, dude, because I jogged off. And they were like, you fucking pussy. You laid on the ground. Blah, blah, blah. They were talking so much shit. And then my knee swelled up. <laughs> 
And then, and then, credit to me, credit to me. Uh, I used that fuck. as leverage to get my first ever iPhone because I lost my flip phone with my crutches that night. And I told my mom, I'm so fucking depressed. I think I need an iPhone. <laughs> and then I got an iPhone. Oh, shit. That's really good. Fucking count it. Let's go. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm looking at next week's schedule. Uh, Arizona at Kansas State. That's a ranked on, on ranked. Um, LSU, South Carolina. God, there's is there really not anything better? But 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 a lot of people were trying to paint this weekend as a week as a week weekend, right? And yet, what did we see this weekend, dude? We saw. Okay, let, let's just go through. Yeah, it here. next week is dog shit. Wow. Okay, that's why makes sense. No, but also today we oh. thought a lot of people thought we're dog shit. We saw Notre Dame lose to <laughs> Northern Illinois. We saw Michigan State beat Maryland on a last second field goal. Jonathan fucking Smith era and Aiden Chili's officially underway. We saw Arkansas double OT against Oklahoma State fucking blow it. We saw a fucking two lane in Kansas State battle that I'm fucking sad that stadium was not more packed out because it was a fucking fight. It was a great game. We saw Iowa State somehow find a way to beat Iowa and look really like sad. they were dead in the water. I'm really we saw Alabama fucking have to scrap and fight through South Florida. And we saw <clears> Syracuse <throat> fucking ruin Georgia Tech's beginning Cinderella season. So do not sleep on the supposedly weaker weeks of yeah. college football. No doubt. You have sleepy weekends and then shit happens. Uh, we we all picked Mississippi State in this game except for Hunt. He had uh, Arizona State, and that's looking like a good pick for Hunt. I, I bought into the Jeff Levy hype. I was like, "Oh, they're going to move the ball and score," and uh, they're not. They got three points with a minute to go in the in the first half. They look like dog shit. Yeah, they're not good. Look at this guy, He's Cam Scadabo. 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 Said a million times. Skibbity Travis. Scadabo. Uh, Travis Ryu got to start scheming wide receivers open. Play calling seems telegraphed. They threw for three hundred yards though. But this game was never going to prove it. I mean. Dane Bergeron, this team is not tough. They are finesse. No dogs on defense. I, mm. I dare you to say something about Dane. No, He'll put no, his no, claw on no, your no, face. No, 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 Dane is a fucking special. I've already been. Yeah. I've literally <clears throat> been choked out by Dane on this show. Before. Yeah, I know. This is not a Dane take. I'm kind of agreeing with him. What I'm saying is, I said it this week. A tentative take that I'm not willing to go forward with because I don't know enough. But, like, after watching the LSU-USC film, why are we getting big dog? Why are we getting popped by L by USC? Why are they having more big hits than we are? Why are they extending on us on the D-line? Why are they fucking pushing us backwards? Like, what happened to when we were the bigger, badder, stronger, faster motherfuckers? Um, Jeb, love you guys in the show. Shout out, Jeb. Great to see Richard dog, also. BK was uh, lighting up the kicker at halftime. What was that about? So, I, we had no sound here. I don't fucking know. So, Damian Ramos missed the field goal at the end of the first half, and Brian Kelly chewed his ass to the locker room. And remember, there was the weird thing where they had the they, – Ricky Collins didn't get out of bounds, so they had the runoff, and they had to quickly get on the field and kick the field goal. Yeah. And, and he missed Which it. Which else you got like, lucky with. Sometimes you just miss a field goal. There was something else there with the function – with, like, the operation that Kelly was pissed about. It could have just been that he missed a kick. Guys, kickers miss kicks. Either way, it's like, fuck you. Damian Ramos came through twice last week when you needed him the same way that a fucking man in the desert needed water. Like, Damian Ramos at least Ramos. fucking kept you alive last week. Yeah. Uh, Ricky Nelson, family might, uh, the family might look forward to whiskey and wine more than the football game. Whiskey and wine fans from Iowa. How about that? Ricky, I've met Ricky before. Hey, babe, Rick. He's a fucking great guy. Junkyard great dogs. Family. Preach, Matt. Nothing fancy about tonight. Kelly thinks he has a running game, but he doesn't. Go win at South Carolina. Prove something. Good for telling those guys behind you off that, to F off. Love Bro, you. That's fucking, from Jeff Hadhorn. Fucking Kentucky. This is so funny. Because He said I love you, him for telling those guys off. All you motherfuckers try to tell me. Your brother. That, uh, that fuck that kid. I don't care about him. <laughs> all you, all you, all you motherfuckers try to tell me that Mark Stoops is good. You all try to tell me that Kentucky is good. Kentucky ran the ball 17 times in a row and kicked two field goals. What we got because they are fucking. Did you pee pussies. in this? 
Because they are fucking pussies. Did you did you pee in this? Cheers. Cheers, boys. I feel like he I feel like he might be uh I feel no. like he might have pissed in this for no. just because I, I told him to go away. Never, 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 never. Thank you, Bo. Cheers. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> that was bad liquor. Cheers. Cheers. That was shitty ass liquor. Cheers. Cheers. Anyway, fuck Kentucky. I've been trying to tell y'all for years. I would like to say Mark fucking poops. We had six minutes left in the show. Um, because they're I'm being congratulated for telling off the guys behind us. But I would like to say that I do love Bo A Bear. He's he's a good looking man. Matt, nobody this is what people don't understand about you. You are actually one of the most incredibly kind people that anybody could don't, ever meet. Don't you fucking ruin my reputation. It's right just now. when you're working, you get in the zone and you can get a little hot. But like in human interaction, you're actually very nice. <laughs> Megan making money. Megan Nunez and Alex Nunez talk about this all the time. They love you. Shout like, out to the Nunez. Basically, more than anybody in the world. And, I, and I've said this to everybody I've met with in casual interaction. Matt's a, he's a very kind person. He just locks in and he just like, when he's locked in, you just, just can't really fuck with him. That's true. It's like Warren Sapp. I remember when I was a little yeah. kid because I used to get to go on like the field and shit as a little kid, right? And like, I remember meeting Warren Sapp when he wasn't playing a game. And he was like, oh, Bobby, what's up? And he's like, talking to my dad. He's like, chilling, being cool. And then when Warren Sapp was playing a game, he was like, fuck you, motherfucker. Like, what? Like, what? Talking to shit. Like, that's just, that's just life. Warren Sapp is also goes, terrifying. Dude. No like when, fucking shit. When he shit, was with dude. the Raiders and had cornrows and shit, I was no like, God, this fucking shit, terrifying. Dude. It's so one of the scariest good. motherfuckers in the planet. God, it's so fucking good. Uh, all right, let's see. Um, Wes Walker, can we at least. All agree. We're excited to see his excellence. The return of the Emperor of Empty Yards to face the FCS team of the NFL. <laughs> Shout out Derek Carr. Oh, show me the Carfax. Shit. Guys, guys, show me the Carfax. Shout out Jennifer McMahon. I don't know Thank if you've you. seen it, but Lamar Jackson and Derek Carr had the exact same passing stats last year. Oh, look at this. Brett, hey, here's one from Brett. In NOLA for the 2019 Natty, Matt shook my hand was really nice. Almost made up for all his bullshit. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Matt's the radio equivalent of Derek Carr. Mm. <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> you meet him in everyday life, he's great. Okay, I agree with that. But at work, he fucking sucks. <laughs> you can't say I suck at work. Give me my lighter, man. Give me my lighter. Did you get rid of my lighter? You're barking up the wrong God tree, damn it, motherfucker. Get through these super chats. You only got a couple We're done with the there. super chats. Did you fucking get rid of my lighter? Let Did me you see. Give it to somebody. No, my God bad, dude. Damn Let it. me see. Oh, wait. Hold on. Oh, I got it right here. Oh, wait. No, this is some Zen. Let me just pop a couple of these over right here. What are you asking? My daughter's three. Oh, I want my fucking lighter. What lighter? God damn it, T Bob. You fucking gave my lighter to somebody. I know you did. You don't even remember. Shut up, Zen. Uh, <laughs> Zintan. I told you last Zintan. year, man. Hey, Have you hey. ever seen? I told, Zintan. I told you last year, Matt. We need Pig Cage back. Shout out, Philip Piggott. <laughs> Shout out, Cover. Shout out, Philip Piggott. Shout out, Cover. Oh, Bo, Bo had Nichols plus 52. One cover, Shout out. Not Easy babe. money. Not a babe. Easy money. Um, all right, y'all. Shout out to Don Juan Cigar. We got three minutes left. Shout out Don, Don Juan Cigar Don Bar. Juan. Shout out to Don Juan. Uh, great spot right here in Town Center. The retail shop is next door. So if you want to come by, walk into the humidor, buy your cigars for home, you got it. If you want to come hang out at the bar, there's TVs everywhere. You can sit at the bar. Great Great, night. Se great selection of whiskey, premium cigars as well. Awesome. Big shout out to Don Juan as always. And uh, Gotlit Light Installers, we appreciate Derek and the crew over at Gotlit. They're awesome. I know they took care of both of us last year. Um, if you want Christmas lights, like Erica, it, oh, look at that. You, saw, you didn't see that earlier? The pick, the pick that ended up being I a won, six? I covered with Nebraska, but I had the over in that game as well. That didn't hit. Oh, well. Uh, GotlitLights.com. GotlitLights.com. It's easy. Uh, you call them. They come out. They put up your Christmas lights. 
uh, when the season's over, they take them down and bring them away. Oh my God! You you do nothing except have a beautifully decorated house. I just burped it's, acid in my awesome. throat. That's uh, good. Anyway, All right. anyway, anyway, guys, shout out to Home Field Apparel. Okay, I got a lot of compliments on this shirt. It's not the only shirt I'm going to wear this season. We've got a lot of shirts. We've got the bomber jacket. We've got great hoodies coming. If you buy the LSU box, you get a fucking sweet ass 1970 SEC championship shirt. You get two. You get this long sleeve shirt. You get another excellent short sleeve shirt. Ooh, you get a koozie. I do like that you one. You get a lot. fucking. You get a pair of socks that are incredible. I was digging through my laundry trying to find the socks. Early. They're going to cut us off in like a minute. Couldn't find them. Minute. Anyway, if you use the code LSU24, you get 15% off that first order. Act now. Shout out to Home Field Apparel. We fucking love you. Thanks, Alondra. You're the best. Alondra's hey, the best. That's if you're on uh, YouTube, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, Facebook, like the page, share the post, all that stuff. We, we appreciate it. Next week, uh, 11 a.m. Central Kick. There's, for South Carolina. There's nothing I love more than getting incredibly too drunk for an 11 a.m. kickoff at Don Juan. So come hang out, guys. <laughs> it's going to be a ton of fun. We're all going to have really sideways afternoons in which we question what we're doing with our lives. And uh, maybe we'll do some drugs together. Did it's you up know? To you, Golf dude. South said, Did you know the TNT Bob stands for Trump? Are you Trump Bob? Not true. Let's be clear. <laughs> Nobody's ever said this. Tiny Matt. Tiny Matt. I've said it a million times. He's very weak. He's very weak, guys. He presents a big picture, but he's ultimately too nice. If you trust in me, I will get the deal done. If I was a head coach at LSU, we would be 3 and 0. You say 2 and 0. You've only played two, played two uh, games. Yeah, but uh, 3 and 0. I thought you're way too drunk for that. 3 and 0 because I get the deals done. What a loser, Matt Muscona. Thank you for watching. Not T-Bob. Thank you. Couldn't it be me. Go Colonels. Never a chance. <laughs> Go Colonels. He says go Colonels. I oh. say you lost 44 to 22. By, you, you shout out a team that lost by three oh. touchdowns today. You lost by three touchdowns. Classic China. 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 You think you're fucking tight, <laughs> but at the end of the day, I'll put up the wall. I'll shut down all of these Louisianians go. beating LSU. We got to go. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Goodbye, you chuckle fucks. <laughs> <laughs>